So from one ocean to another. Uh, next index we're going to talk about is the Indian Ocean Dipole. It looks at sea surface temperature variations west to east across the Indian Ocean. Uh, impacts of weather around the Indian Ocean Basin and they come in three phases, positive, neutral and negative phases. The neutral phase, sea surface temperatures to the northwest of Australia are typically warm, high convection, rainfall is typical in the area, but there's little sea surface temperature variation west to east, so that doesn't really change the weather around Australia. In negative phase, however, there is warmer than normal waters over the um, northwest coast of WA and cooler than normal waters off the east coast of Africa. What that, those warmer than normal waters, as we expect, uh, lead to increased evaporation, increased convection, uh, rain, and in the area, and the circulation intensifies. Um, in this case, the increase, there's an increased chance of rain across Australia. So we have an intensified westerly wind pattern in the region, bringing warmer waters uh, to the northwest coast. Uh, this intensified sea surface temperature difference between east and west uh, Indian, should be not Pacific, sorry. Um, let me pause and I'll fix that. There, <laughs> it fixed. Um, the intensified temperature difference between east and west Indian Ocean. Uh, stronger winds uh, can move more waters east to the east. Uh, which leads to more cloud and therefore more, more rain. Uh, so the increased chance of rain across Australia follows the what we call the northwest cloud band, uh, but the general impact across Australia is increased um, rain across southern parts of Australia. This is during the negative phase. In the positive phase, we get the warmer than normal waters occurring off the African coast where there's increased uh, convection in the area due to the warmer waters and cooler than normal waters off the north coast of Australia. So it's the opposite pattern to what we observed during the negative phase. Westerly winds weaken and sometimes flow easterly. Uh, easterly winds move warmer waters to western Indian Ocean, uh, giving more rain in the west part of the Indian Ocean. Um, it becomes less cloud over Australia because there's, as we all know, descending air is dry air, dense air, and so um, that's cloud cover, northwest WA. Uh, but the impact of a positive phase Indian Ocean dipole is a decreased chance of rain across central and southern Australia. we look at the Indian Ocean Dipole, and this is, I think, literally a temperature difference between the west coast highlighted here by this box and the east coast uh, of the Indian Ocean Basin. Um, temperature variations behave like that. Um, uh, when it's above the line, it's in its positive phase. When it's below the line, it's in its negative phase. And at some point, between some uh, range of values, it'd be considered neutral. Um, when it's positive phase, so when it's above the line, uh, generally you're getting lower than normal, lower than, remember the decile maps we talked about before, ranking the rainfall distributions and looking at um, how the rain uh, fares in the ranking from uh, lowest ever to highest ever. So what we see for large parts of Australia during positive IOD, uh, large parts of Australia are in the lower than normal, so maybe even lowest ever uh, recorded rainfall. In negative IOD phase, uh, the opposite happens where we get an increased chance of rainfall sometimes uh, in the highest ever recorded range, but certainly well above the average for um, parts of Southeast Australia. So we've talked about uh, sea, surface, sea surface temperature driven indicators of Australian climate. Next, we're going to focus on one that's more related to the winds, the prevailing winds that we've talked about so much. And 
particularly those coming from the um, Hadley cell. You recall the Hadley cell, there is the um, subtropical ridge, which is the high pressure band that uh, results from the descending columns of air uh, between the Hadley and feral cells, um, typically found across the, the, the guts of Australia, high pressure band. Um, there is the westerly winds originating from, remember, air coming from the high pressure systems deviating to the left. So in our case, it, it looks like the, it is the westerly uh, flow of those uh, air currents. Now, um, because of variations in the season, the subtropical ridge will move north and south across Australia. In the summer period, the ridge is lower. So the high pressure band is lower um, than normal. And in winter, uh, as the subtropical ridge uh, in response to the in, um, intertropical convergence zone going above the equator, the subtropical ridge would move further north. Um, and uh, those westerlies typically bring rain, which is what we call winter season. Um, so how do we make an index out of this? So by looking at the band of westerly winds coming out of the high pressure band of, uh, from the subtropical ridge, by looking at the band of westerlies and where, where they occur relative to the sort of neutral conditions. Um, you just, you can imagine that if there's a high pressure system, this is a, a depiction of what we'd call, I guess, the summer pattern where the high pressure uh, subtropical ridge band um, is uh, here further south on the Australian continent, the westerly winds that would normally transport those uh, polar air masses onto the Australian continent are sort of, if you like, blocked um, by the, uh, the highs. When the high, high would be trying to equalize the pressure by flying south and being deflected to the right, so uh, to the left, even. Um, so um, that the blocking of westerlies typically means this is a, a warmer conditions. Um, and remember there's that um, scenario where there's a persistent low pressure off the coast here. Uh, and if there's a low pressure trough across the uh, um, eastern uh, part of the continent, that high pressure can draw hot, dry air from the continent down into southern Australia, southeast Australia, leading to heat wave conditions. So the subtropical high blocks these westerly flows. Um, and we recall that the westerlies are strong because of the absence of windbreaks and uh, the roaring 40s as well, and one of those uh, those bands of westerly winds that, yeah, you know that stuff. Anyway, um, so uh, we characterize the belt of uh, winds, uh, westerly winds through this southern annular mode, the SAM index, also co called the Antarctic, Oh, forget, hang on, I'll, it'll come to me. Um, so during a positive phase of SAM, which is, you know, in, in the winter time, now remember winter, we would expect those westerlies to be a bit closer to um, the Australian continent because the subtropical ridge has moved further north. Uh, in a winter phase, a winter scenario, positive phase SAM, the belts contract and move further south. It gives you less rain in Australia and less snow in the Alps, but it does increase onshore flows. In summertime, where those the subtropical ridges lower to the south of the Australian continent, those positive phase means the belts move further south still, but more further south than normal. And that's the key, it's compared to the normal conditions. What this tends to do is give more rain to Eastern Australia um, as the highs will bring, draw moisture from the Pacific uh, Ocean here, north, uh, north of Queensland coast here, um, increasing onshore flow. And this often gives you a reduced chance of heat waves In a negative phase, winter scenario, the band moves north. Now remember, the band moves north anyway as a result of the subtropical uh, ridge moving north in winter. 
this is more north than normal. What that does then is give more rain in southern Australia, provides more snow to the Alps, but it's also leading to an increased dry airflow from central Australia because that band of high pressure systems is uh, further north. And so the, if you imagine a high sitting up here, the flow is south and then deflects the dry, 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 dry air flows. In negative phase, summer scenario, the belt expands and moves even further north. Now, um, that means that there's less rain in eastern Australia, increased airflow in central Australia, and increased risk of spring heat waves. Um, this is where we get the scenario where we would have a, um, um, a high pressure system off the east coast, these uh, blocking highs. Now, we talked about sea surface temperature uh, as a, a variable that feeds into an index like El Nino Southern Oscillation Index or the um, Indian Ocean Dipole. We talked about how the position of those westerly wind bands through the SAM index indicates um, uh, it's related to the southern um, subtropical ridge and indicates the um, flows of air and their impact on whether Australia gets heat waves or uh, increased, decreased rain. When these indices interact, so they can be in phase, where they work together to exacerbate risks, be it flood or drought. Um, they can be out of phase. So when one is high, that would suggest a, a bad situation for Australia, whereas the other counters that being low, um, has less impact on Australia generally. Um, and the combined effect of indices can be um, variable across Australia. Um, impacts of interaction between these indices uh, include the timing of fronts uh, with the northwest cloud, with the fronts that uh, cause the, the bands of, uh, um, we've seen those cold uh, front bands in southern Australia, northern Australia, the timing of the rains, um, so it's okay to get rains when you expect it, but if you're not, if you don't, don't expect it, then um, it can have uh, consequences on your industry or on your, um, yeah, lots of things. Uh, it changes the temperature and the direction of the ocean currents. Um, and of course, the, uh, uh, the, these things have global uh, implications. So when we look at the interaction of the, the IOD, and SAM in the lead up to last year, or this year's rather, uh, summer season, fire season. Um, the Indian Ocean Dipole, this is the chart I was showing earlier, was a positive phase. Positive phase, but not only in its positive phase, but in the, I think it's the largest uh, deviation from uh, the, the normal um, than ever experienced or ever recorded um, with this technique. Um, so, in the lead up to the fire season, um, it was uh, at its peak. Um, SAM during that same period, here I'm highlighting the same period, is negative. Now both these scenarios suggest less rain um, to Southeast Australia. So less rain means drier soils, drier soils means drier vegetation. Those two things combined increase the fire risk. What I have here is a, a plot of the a time series averaged over uh, parts of Southeast Australia, showing in the blue, uh, what we call root zone soil moisture. So this is the moisture that's in the first meter or so of um, soil. Um, and you can see it varies uh, with season, um, but I guess the, the point is, you know, we never take any one measurement we sort of look at its measurements uh, in, in the vicinity, but also in the context of the history. So in the lead up to a fire season, soil moisture was at its lowest ever recorded by this technique. Uh, similarly, this uh, green curve measures vegetation health, if you like, and the vegetation uh, up and down with seasons, as we expect, but then there's this uh, dramatic drop 
from September last year um, to uh, December. So this happens to coincide as well with this decrease in soil moisture, which we sort of expect. But the consequences are disastrous. So, yeah. So we've covered a bit of ground today looking at indices and how we can interpret them and their as indicators for what might happen to our climate in the near future or a little bit longer term. Uh, key to understanding indices is this idea of anomaly. It's a variation of a variable from its normal conditions. Um, but it's important that we look at those variations in the context of what's happened in the past or in across its neighbors. Sea surface temperature is one of the key variables in understanding the drivers of Australian weather. Uh, its impact on the atmospheric moisture content and therefore the temperature and pressure and the circulations of winds um, is um, critical. Um, it drives the calculation of indices such as the Nino uh, uh, Southern Oscillation Index. Um, it should be ENSO, sorry, <laughs> Southern Oscillation Index and Indian Ocean Dipole Indices. Um, the annular mode is based on, also um, I understood, <laughs> remembered that it's uh, the Antarctic Oscillation. Um, it's the impact of the subtropical ridge, its position on the Australian continent and its impact on the westerly wind belt. And these indices can act in concert or out of phase, so they can have good consequences um, out of phase or disastrous consequences when they're in phase. <laughs>